Isn't that awesome? When we just get to see people taking their dream, taking their purpose, and, and moving forward. And we got some real exciting news about Reach College for next year that we're going to be coming down the pipe with. But I'm going to give you just a little quick teaser about it right now. But we are about to merge and partner with Mission SOS. And we are going to raise up missionaries. And we're going to raise up church planners that are going to go all over Europe and all over America in the future and plant life-giving churches. And so there's some new good stuff coming to that as well. But today we're going to be getting ready to worship God in our giving. We've worshiped him in, in so many ways now, but now it's time to worship him in our, in our giving. If this is your first time with us, don't feel any weird pressure to give. You're our guest. We want this service to be a gift to you. But if God would speak to your heart, then obey him over anything that I'm saying. But for us that we we know this is our church family, this is our church home, this is our opportunity to continue to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're winning souls like crazy. Over 8,000 already. We've had an average of almost 40 souls saved every weekend in the month of uh, of May. In the month of May, May is supposed to be a downtime. We've had we've had a few hundred already in the first part of the year and we're continuing to build Build, all of that coming. We got some great news on the Dream Center. I'll tell you about here in just a second when we pray over the over the offering. But I want to encourage you guys when you are giving, hear me and hear me clearly. We say this so much, but it is the heartbeat of Jesus. Jesus said, when we give, we should give cheerfully. We shouldn't give begrudgingly. We shouldn't give out of pressure. We shouldn't even give just out of need. We should give out of the out of the depths of our heart, out of obedience to God, because God said that we should give. Jesus continued to teach us that giving is very important to the health of our spiritual walk, but also to the health of the kingdom advancing forth. forth. But at the same time, we don't want to do it out of any weirdness. We want to do it out of joy. We want to do it out of pleasure. It is our opportunity to give to God today, isn't it? We've been blessed to be a blessing. So let's be a blessing tonight. Let's step out in radical faith. Be obedient. Don't ask me what to give. Ask God what to give. Just ask him and he'll tell you. And when you obey, he'll bless your socks off. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we got, we have to gather together and give into your kingdom. We're not giving to man or an organization, but we are giving to the almighty God. Today, God, you don't need our money. God, you want us to show you that money is not our God, that you are our God, and we put you first in every area, including our finances. So today we give cheerfully, we give generously, we give obediently, and Father, I pray upon every gift and upon every giver that you would strengthen them, that you would pour out your mighty, abundant blessing so much that they don't have room to receive in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. As the ushers are receiving this, I'm going to give you guys a couple quick updates as we are getting ready to launch a lot of new things. A lot of big things are happening. We have, I just, we've been praying about this. We've been talking about some of these things, but it's so critical to give you this quick update on it. The Dream Center, we, we got this building up in Colleen that we're going to be turning into a residential drug rehabilitation program where we're going to be able to take young men and women in the future off the streets, rehabilitate them, get their life back on track, get Jesus in their heart, and then get them out doing their purpose. But the first phase of that, the first two phases we're going to begin is number one is going to be an outreach. Our outreach arm of Reach Church, everything will begin to run and pipe through the Dream Center in the future. And as we're reaching out in that, we're going to be impacting our cities here in Austin and up in Killeen. But it's also going to become a residential program for young men that have already graduated a, a drug rehabilitation program. They've already come through it and they're clean and they're living their life for God and they want to they want to be able to get their feet underneath them. It's kind of like a halfway house mentality and then we're going to use them to be the leadership to be able to start the rehabilitation program. And so we've we've been preparing to do that. We've been getting ready to do that. We ran into one little bump in the road, but you know, I, I love I love what God taught me a long long time ago. He told me something very specific. He said you're going to face many obstacles when you try to do good work for me. But don't look at an obstacle as a roadblock. Look at it as an opportunity to overcome. When you trust me with it, then, then I'm going to move the mountains for you. And so we had this roadblock where we got this. It's a military barracks. 
and it used to be a residential military barracks. It's never been used anything different, but the city had recoded it, not to our knowing, not to anyone's knowing, as a commercial land, so we weren't allowed to put residential people in, and we were getting no breakthrough. We made one phone call to a family member here at Reach Church. They made one phone call to Colleen, and we just got the official paperwork today. They have changed the entire coding to where they said, you can do whatever you want. You can put a motel in there if you want. That's just amazing, isn't it? So we're going to be able to do anything that we want, which we already know what we want to do. And one more big thing, the day before I was going to Europe for Mission SOS's 20-year celebration, the day before I was going, I got contacted. So we need to be praying about this more because we're going this week and early next week to try to finalize something here. But I got contacted by a realtor who said, I hear your church is looking for land to build in the future. And I said, oh, yes, we are. And he said, I have a guy who owns a piece of land not even a half a mile down the road from you. It's almost 20 acres. He's, he's turned down three straight offers at asking price because the land's been in his family for almost 200 years, and he doesn't want it just to go to anything. And when I told him about your church, he researched Reach Church, and after his research, he told me to call you and tell you he wants you to have this land. He'll come down on the price, and he's even willing to own or finance it for us if necessary. And so this looks like a big miracle that's about to take place. And, you know, we, 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 we vet everything. We put everything before God. If this is what God wants, that's what we'll have, right? But we're going to go after it, right? Jesus said, ask, seek, and knock. We're not going to sit back and just wait. We're going to go after it and let God close the door on it if it's not him. Amen? Okay, you guys ready just for a quick word? I just feel like very, very, very quick, I just want to, because we, we've had just such an amazing night here and, and experience and encounter with God and worship. And some of those scriptures that I was just reading to you, I, I, I want to I wanna go back and give you some principles to live by. I just want to give you three quick principles out of the Word of God. We're not going to be able to bring them up on the screen because this is coming under unction of the Holy Spirit, coming right out of the, the heart of God tonight. But this is, these, are, these are fundamental principles that I felt like God wanted, wanted us to share together as we can understand what he's done tonight and when he's here in, this, in, this, in these moments and, and when we're in the presence of God. The first principle, I read the scripture for it already, but I want to give it to you. It's, the first principle is this, all that God is and all that God does is good. All that God is and all that God does is good. He does nothing bad and there's nothing evil within him. Everything God does and everything God is, is good. The scripture for that is Psalm 119 verse 68. God, you are good and what you do is good. Teach me your ways. So God, you are good. That means that all that God is, is good. And then, oh, and then what you do is good. So all that God does is good. Teach me your ways because we want to be good. We want to live a good life. We want to be a good son and daughter to God. We want to, we want to be a good brother and sister to our family. We want to be a good citizen in society. We want to be a good ambassador of Christ. Number two, God is good to everyone. This is so important. I hear it all the time, especially here in Austin. You invite somebody to church, and they say, oh, man, I ain't going to church. As soon as I go in there, the place is going to fall apart. I'm going to get struck with lightning because they feel like their life has been so messed up. They've done so many bad things. And I try, I try to explain to people that's exactly the kind of people that God is looking for. He's looking for those that have not lived a bad life, but he's also looking for those that have lived a rough life. Hear this now. Psalm 145, verse 9. The Lord is good to all. How many is he good to? See, there's times, folks, when we face bad things. Bad things happen. Bad things happen to us. Maybe it came from our parents. Maybe it's a loved one. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's a coworker. Might be a business partner. Could be a stranger. 
could be could be just somebody that's not thinking straight, somebody that's been polluted in their mind, and, and, and they've been they've been a racist towards you because of the color of a, of your skin, the pigmentation of your skin. That's it's evil, but that doesn't come from God. And even if a Christian, so-called Christian, would be an agent of the enemy used to bring to bring hurt into your life, it's not from God. And there's times where we could feel like we could feel like what. What is going on, God? Like, do you hate me? Do you not love me? Like, God, what, what did I do that's so bad that I would get dealt this hand? But the truth is, it's, it's not God. We just read in our one-year Bible reading plan this week that God gave full dominion to man. That means God gave full authority in this earth to man. So the way this world goes is not up to God. It's up to man. The way that we make it up to God, Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 through 6, is that he said, and I appoint those both kings and priests under this earth, right? And then when we take the authority, verse 6 says, and we resubmit it to God, then God becomes the governor again of this earth. But as long as mankind is, is running away from God and trying to excuse God and trying to make up all these different false gods that try to confuse people and blind people from the truth, then God can never be in this earth as it is. That's why he said he must bring this earth to an end and start it anew. Why would he have to wipe out the whole deal and start a new one if this one wasn't so messed up? Because it's man that has authority and man as a whole. So here's, here's just a snippet of this. You as a Christian, you as a believer, you as somebody who professes Christ, you have the authority of Christ within you. Are you hearing me today? And so we don't have to just sit back and watch a nation, a state, or a city, or a world go to waste. We could do something about it because we have authority. And when we lay that authority down, according to Revelation 1, when we lay that authority down and resubmit it to God, then he picks it back up again and glorifies himself through our life into other people's lives. And then we become that true king, that true priest unto our nation, unto our, into our world. And then here is, here is another one. This is such, such a good one. God's goodness impacts us. We, we are touched by God's goodness. We are blessed by God's goodness. God's goodness is all around us. We just have to look for it. We just have to have an open heart for it. If you look for it with your natural eyes, it's hard to see with all the chaos and the hurt and all the confusion that's happening. But when you look at it, people say, man, I was just in Europe and they're, they can't believe. Europe, just hear this now, Europe is 1.7% Christian. Do you know that every Europe, every nation in Europe was founded as a Christian nation? Every one of them. And now they are 1.7%. And we have a lot of people in power that want us to become a new Europe. They're modeling the government and everything after Europe because they're, they're, they're wanting to be that. But in the end, that's the future. If we look at the, Europe's in trouble right now. They're at the brink of a world, war, a world war. They know it. They all know it. We might not know it across the pond, but they know it there. It is, it is one of the most troubled times in the history of that continent. Their systems have failed them. Because their system is trusted in man instead of trusting in God. And when we look around us, when we look around us and with our natural eyes, we may just see the chaos and the confusion. But if we look with our spiritual eyes, we see that this is the best time ever to be alive. And I'll tell you why. Because we are called to be a light to darkness. A city that is set on the side of a hill that cannot be hid. Are you hearing me today? We are called to be that. So the darker and darker the world gets, the brighter and brighter we can shine. Not for our glory, not for our sake, but for the gospel's sake, for the sake of God, for God's glory. So all I see is a nation getting set up for another awakening. I see a nation getting set up for another great revival. I see a nation getting set up for God to birth something that is so fresh and so new that it's going to just change the entire dynamics and demographics of everything that we know. 
That's what I believe. That's what I, that's what I stand in faith for. So here's, here's a scripture for this, that God's goodness impacts us. is Psalm 34, 8. And that's what I read earlier. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Blessed is the one, the person who takes refuge in him. We have to taste to see. People say, I don't know that God is good, but have you tasted? Because once you taste, you can never go back. I got, a, I got invited weeks ago to a family's house, and, and, and the wife is, is from China, and they made this unbelievable, amazing buffet, straight like from China-type food, and it was, I still think about it. I dream about it a little bit. I've only, I've only been to China once, and it was on a very short stop, and I didn't get to really eat anything but an MRE. Uh, that's a military packaged goodies, right? But now I've tasted. Not, not, I'm not talking about Mama Fu's Chinese food. I'm talking about straight from China Chinese food, right? I've tasted, and I got to tell you, brothers and sisters, it was good. And now I want more. And when I taste God, what does that mean? That means when I experience, when I encounter, when I let my guard down and worship God like tonight, I've tasted his goodness, and I want some more of that. When I trust God with my family and I see my marriage getting stronger, my children, being, when I trust God with bringing me the right one to me, when I trust God with my relationships, when I put him first in them and they begin to flourish, now I've tasted and I've seen. When I trust God with my finances, when I, when I step out of faith and I tithe and I, and I give above that and, and God blesses me more than I've ever been blessed in my entire life. And, and I know I came from the ghetto and that's not hard to do, but, uh, you know, he just keeps doing it every year, blessing me more and more and more. I've tasted and I've seen. And then with my future, when I've, when I've trusted God, when, when, I was, when I was looking to plant a church on the beach, <laughs> That's what I wanted. And God said, Austin, Texas. And I've never, never been to the state nor the city in my entire life. But now I've tasted. Yeah. And God is so good. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yeah. And now I want some more. Yeah. I can't get enough of this church. I can't get enough of this family. And so that's, that's the principle. God, he's all around us. He's impacting us. But we, we can't have this American Christianity mindset where we expect that God's just a waiter and he's going to come serve us. That's not the way it works. When we serve him, when we love him, when we lay our life down as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to him, when we do those things, then we begin to taste God. We begin to taste his goodness. And once we get a taste, we can't have enough. And that's God. God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen? Can we give God one big good one tonight for all of his goodness? So I want to encourage you guys. I know we do every Wednesday, but, but let's not let this momentum ever stop. Because momentum is always here from God. God's always on the move. Movement is momentum. God is always on the move. But when we embrace him, when we latch on to him, and we ride his coattails through that movement, then we begin to see so many incredible things happen in our lives and in our friends' and our family's lives. And that's the heart of what we're going after. We're not chasing a moment, people. We're chasing a movement. Are you hearing me? You chase a moment, you'll stay right where you're at for the rest of your life, waiting for that next Holy Ghost goose bump that you once felt a long time ago to come. But if you chase a movement, you'll walk in the power of God. You'll live in the power of God. You will be a demonstration of the power of God. And that, that is what God's always been after. Father, I thank you right now for each and every one that is here. And Lord, I pray, Father, that you would just birth that fire. Fan it in the flame, Holy Spirit. Breathe upon it. And all of us. Let none of us get weary. Let none of us get tired of doing good. Let none of us escape.